Do you know what this is? For those of you that have been rocking with me for a while know that ever since I found financial independence, I've been really looking for things to do to spend my time that enrich who I am. And a lot of the advice that I talk about on the channel is finding things to enrich your life and looking to pursue your passions. So those of you that have been around for a while know that I have passions for gardening. They know I have a passion for golf, among a couple of other things, as well as music. Well, that, folks, is my acceptance letter to the UC Master Gardener program. I've been talking about the UC Master Gardener program from since before I retired. And so I, uh, I went through a process that lasted probably about three months and finally got accepted. So I, I just got to tell you that I'm incredibly excited and I just thought I'd share this with you because I, I think it's easy to underestimate the importance of some type of continuing education class. And, you know, you go on to these channels and people are talking about things like following your passions. They're talking about things like find what you're interested in. And it's and a lot of times if you go to people and you ask the question, what are you interested in? What are you passionate about? Or what are you going to do with your time if you have all the time to yourself? They really don't know. So instead of telling people what they need to do, my goal is to really tell you something that I'm doing. Because I think once you see it in action, it, it makes it real and makes it more exciting. So today I want to share with you a few things. One, I just wanted to share with you uh, that I actually got accepted to the program. But I want to tell you a little bit about what it is, what it took to get there, um, some of the expectations that are on me because, you know, they say in life that nothing's free and the Master Gardener program is, is no exception. And, and then I want to talk a little bit about my, why I joined the Master Gardener program because it delves really into a lot of my history and how I became who it is that I became. Then I want to talk a little bit about kind of the second half, you know, once, once, the, once the goals are met. So uh, for those of you that haven't been here before, uh, my name is Sabado. I retired or I, I found financial independence at the age of 51 and was able to retire. And I have this channel here to share with you my journey in hopes that it'll hopefully inspire you to live your best life. Um, it's never my expectation that you retire early, but it is my expectation that you live your best life. And so whether you're working or not, we all have that expectation of ourselves and we should have that expectation of each other. So let's get into it. So a little bit about the UC Master Gardener program. So many of you know, I live out in California and we have the University of California and the University of California has a whole host of continuing education types of courses. So you can learn anything from agriculture. You could learn um, just about anything. The University of California has healthcare stuff and academic things. And so and the Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources, there's what's called the Master Gardener Program. And the Master Gardener Program is a program that doesn't just teach you about how to plant plants, but it teaches you the science behind the plants. It teaches you about the microorganisms. It teaches you about the real nuts and bolts. So as opposed to being a person that goes to Lowe's and picks up plants, puts them in the ground, has them die and goes and tells your friends that all your plants are dying, you actually have some objective science and you have access to research that's being done by the School of Agriculture and Natural Resources that allows you to find repeatable mechanisms for your area because most of the Master Gardener programs are located in the specific areas that they're taught. So those specific dynamics, whether it's heat, sunlight, temperature, so on and so forth, are all able to be taken into account, but you're able to leverage that research to figure out the best stuff to grow in your area and how to grow it and how all of the pieces work together. And so this is a 15-week program that meets once a week for about six hours each time we meet to go through each of those uh, dynamics. So it'll talk about soil health. It'll talk about uh, temperature. It'll talk about the different types of microbes. It'll talk about diseases, talk about citrus trees and uh, vegetables and different types of flowers, plants and shrubs and so on. So by the time I'm I'm done with it, I'll be able to help others in the community. So, and, and just to give you a little bit of perspective, this wasn't an easy program to get into. As I mentioned earlier, I've been thinking for about the last year that this is something that I want to do. So 
like most things, the first thing I do is I, I go onto the internet and say, is there a gardening program through uh, the University of California? And the answer was yes. But unfortunately, last year, they didn't have the program. I went on the website and kept checking, kept checking, kept checking, and they said, lo and behold, we're going to have it this year. So once I figured out when the program uh, was going to be held and the application progress process, I had to wait till a specific day, so probably about three or four months before the application process opened up. And once the application process opened up, there was about a four or five page application that I had to fill out that talked about my community service endeavors, the work that I've done, my interests, my skill sets, and just who I am as a person. Because I learned very early on that not everybody gets into the program. And more on that when we get further down. So I had to fill out this application. And once I filled out the application, about a month later, a month after the due date, there was a meet and greet. So you went and you talked to different master gardeners. It's funny when you talk to other people who are as passionate as you about something because you get really as excited to talk to them as they are to talk to you about it because it's not about you and them. It's about the thing you have the opportunity to talk about. One of the things that I forgot to mention is that once I figured out the Master Gardener program was a thing, a friend of mine and I went to the Home and Garden show in town and I sat and talked to a Master Gardener for about an hour at the festival or at the expo, uh, but I digress. But anyway, so you go and in this room, it, all of the people that applied for the Master Gardener program, there were two sessions. Uh, one was at 10 o'clock, I think, or nine o'clock in the morning, and the other one was at five o'clock. And the session that I went into, I was under the impression there were gonna be five or six people in there. It turned out there were 75 people inside of that room. Now, it could have been 76, could have been 74, but I estimated about 75 in this room that were all interested in being master gardeners. And so as I was going around talking to different individuals, I realized that there were a bunch of people that had a way more skill. They've probably forgotten more than I will ever know about gardening, but it's just how impacted that program was and how interesting that program is and how helpful it is for the community. The coordinator was there and she talked about the program itself, some of the details of the program, what to expect when you go into the program. And one thing she mentioned, which raised my anxiety from a zero to probably about 150, was they were only taking 24 people into this program. And so out of the 75 people in the first session and probably the other 50 that went to the second session, uh, they were only gonna take 24 people. And so, and I asked the question, is it 24 people because people that are retiring or aging out of the process? They said no, because that's the class size. So there's no real flexibility relative to the how many people they're going to take. And so the next step was making sure I signed up for an interview. And instead of waiting until the end of the interview, and any of you that know anything about me know that I'm not a big fan of things that I have to build up to. And so building up to the interview, I knew would have been anxiety provoking uh, for me. So I signed up for the second slot, uh, which was about three weeks later. So I signed up for the interview and had an interview with two current master gardeners. Now, when you think about a master gardener and you think about somebody that goes to the program, a lot of time it's gonna be retired people that have had a lot of time for a long period of time and they're gonna just be uh, made up a little different than a person that has been working for all of their life up to that point. And so because I only retired about a year and a half ago or a year ago, I was in a different place than they were and I was hoping that I didn't bring too much business to the program. And so I had an interview, but I, I quickly realized that in that conversation, it was just discussing the passion. Uh, regardless of whether or not I got into the program or not, I told them that I was still going to put stuff in the ground. I was still going to learn about gardening. I was still going to try to figure out how to use my beneficial nematodes. I was still going to try to figure out all of those things that go around my gardening because at the end of the day, I'm a gardener, whether I have the master gardener designation or not. And apparently that resonated because I got in after that interview and the interview was tough. Um, so now I'm, I'm in the program and what I realized in this here is the syllabus more or less or the information pack and you can see it's two pages long front and back 
And it goes through things like the training schedule, attendance requirements, and so on. And so I learned very early on that it's a very, very rigorous program. There are very serious expectations. And in fact, there's a waiting list. One of the, one of the requirements that sits on the back end of that is that as a master gardener, and part of, I think, the impetus for having a master gardener program isn't just so people can go back to their home gardens and garden and, and, and be in Better Homes and Garden and Sunset Magazine. It's really about going out into the community and helping the community grow food, become gardens, spread horticultural information. There are places in the town that I live in that have what are called food deserts. And these are areas where people have to go 10 miles in order to go to the grocery store to get fresh fruits and vegetables. And those communities often ask for resources to help people learn how to garden, whether it's at a community center, whether it's at somebody's home, whether it's in a school, helping kids, whether it's some other type of community or just pat giving out and sharing information when people have an opportunity to come together. So at festivals and home and garden expos and, and things like that. So the requirement for the first year after getting out of the program or after completing the program is that I do 50 hours of community service um, in the first calendar. I'm sorry, the first rolling 12 months. So I have it's in, it ends in May. And then by the following May, I have to have 50 hours on top of that, there's a requirement that I do some community, uh, continuing education. And so the continuing education becomes critically important because like most anything, particularly in the world of climate change, the um, things change. The temperatures change. That has an impact on the biology as it relates to gardening. And so I, what I'm going to have to do is make sure I continue to build my education beyond what was inside of the, uh, the training class. And on top of that, in order to get the designation, there's a uh, requirement that I do 25 hours per year of community service ongoing. So there's a lot, there's a big requirement. So getting in was tough. Um, it was an incredibly competitive process. Once you get in, and as I used to say when I was a human resources executive, is getting the job is the easy part, but keeping the job is the hard part. And so it's the same thing here. Getting into the program at this point was the easy part. I've already done it, made it, got the T-shirt. Um, that's not this T-shirt here. This one says, I can't even. But I went in and got the T-shirt. And now the piece is I have to go in. There's quizzes. There's tests. There's a final exam. There's specific timelines. There's attendance requirements. And it's an every week thing, and I can't miss it. And there's a waiting list of people that want to take my slot. Um, but now that I get in, I have to do community service and then I'll have to, um, do additional com continuing education and continuing, uh, community service. So, but I, I think more important than the process is why I wanted to become a master gardener and, and really what set my, set off my gardening career in the first place. So many of you know that I have a pretty expansive garden in my backyard. I say expansive. I mean, there's people that have farms, but I have a pretty uh, productive garden in my backyard. And one of the things that my wife and I did when we moved to our house, when we moved to this town uh, in preparation of retiring, we moved to a town that's a little bit of a smaller town. And we wanted to buy a place that was fairly new uh, because it's less expensive to do that in a smaller town. And, but what we quickly realized is that in order to build the brand new houses, they had to completely decimate the landscape. And I have this thing. I, I, I have this thing about life. I made a commitment to myself that if I have the ability to impact life going forward, I'm going to make sure that I'm very intentional, intentional about bringing life forward. Well, fast forward. We buy this house and the landscape is completely decimated, which means that any organism or any animal that made this life, that made its life on this property is now gone because it's flattened out. And when we moved here, it was dirt and a concrete slab. What better way to bring life back than to start bringing life back into the mix? So once we put down our hardscape so we could walk around a little bit outside, the first thing we did is we planted trees and it's not 
I called somebody in to plant trees. So the first thing that I did is I went to the local tree foundation and I got four trees. And those four trees came to us as little babies and I dug the holes as difficult as that was and I planted those four trees. The next thing I did was I put in four planter boxes and those planter boxes are designed for vegetables. And I did a bunch of research to understand how do I get the earthworms in? How do I get the microbes in? What types of microbes are there? How do I build my soil? So I didn't just go out and buy soil and dump it in. I used what was called the Hugo culture method, where you take logs and stuff, put it under the soil. Then what you cover that with the dirt. And then, but under that, I put um, cardboard, because apparently, and, and this is a hack that many of us, many of you may not know, is if you want to attract earthworms to your garden, if you put wet cardboard down, the wet cardboard attracts earthworms. And those earthworms will eventually eat the cardboard and then move up into your soil, and that creates some of the aeration. But I wanted to create an environment that created additional life. And then there's a host of plants and bushes, a hibiscus, a few salvias. I think I've mentioned another video. I have an avocado tree that came up on its own. Um, but I wanted to create life in a place that life was taken away from and really cultivate this life in a way. And so once you start to build in the, the insects and the bees and the rest of the bugs, then the birds come. We have a host of hummingbirds. We have a host of native birds. We have some exotic birds that come in. Um, for the for the lake behind our house, the cats come in, and unfortunately, the mice from the field next door, uh, they come in. But it's it's a whole self-contained uh, infrastructure, or, or or world basically for for these pets. And so, the the desire to want to have a redo and bringing life forward and uplifting the world by bringing life forward. I was able to do it through my garden. And I, I, anybody that sees my garden will see the amount of care that goes into my garden. Now, is my garden perfect? No. In fact, one of the reasons I don't share many pictures is because sometimes, because things overgrow, I get embarrassed. Because even now, we're in November and I still have tomatoes, Roma tomatoes growing on a plant that's, that's still producing. I covered it up the other night because we had a freeze warning. But if you look out there, it just doesn't look like the better homes and gardens or the sunset gardens uh, type of garden. And, and so and being a perfectionist, I'm, I'm always thinking about that. But if, if you want pictures, put it down in the comments and I'll shoot you over some pictures. I have a few of them that I, I might have up somewhere, but I'll, I'll put some pictures in because it's it's quite the thing. We right now I have lettuce and, and cabbage that are my big and carrots that are my, my big new uh, crops, but there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff out there. And I, if I go through it, this video will be an hour and most of you would drop off anyway, because I would have been long winded. Uh, but ultimately this is just setting up the second half of life. I, I think when you look at life in general, life is broken up into a couple of different acts. And maybe for some people it's two acts, some people it's three. And uh, for me, it's just two halves. The first half of my life where I was running and gunning trying to do what I thought was the right thing to do, trying to have as much structure as I can and, and take care of the people that, requ that required me or that relied upon me. And then I got to a point where once I finished that and realized that as, as difficult as it was to try to be perfect doing that, and as much as I screwed up some of the parts of the, the first half of my life, the second half of my life is ultimately taking what I learned from the first half and applying that with good wisdom uh, into the second half. So that way, the second half of my journey is one that really cements my legacy, who I am, and hopefully uplifts the human condition in some way, which is, is part of the impetus for this YouTube channel and, and why I do the gardening. So, uh, so I just wanted to share with you my journey uh, relative to the Master Gardener program because, folks, I'm just incredibly excited about it. I just think it's one of the coolest things. I didn't think I could do it. When I saw that they were only taking 24 people or 100 people in there, I knew there were at least 50 to 75 people that were more qualified than I am. So I'm just completely humbled by the experience. And I wanted to share it with, with 
each of you um, so you know some of the things that I'm actually doing that as a as a as a retired cat as Sabado that retired cat so on that note I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and cut it short but if you uh, if you like this video and you want to see others like it or you have questions uh, let me know um, you know let me know where you're from because I know that in different parts of the country we have different dynamics going on you could probably see back here that it's raining outside today uh, but I different people have different perspectives in different parts of the country and I, I I've been to most of the 50 states, but I haven't met all the people. And I think it's just interesting to, to share ideas across. And let me know if you think you'd like to see uh, Sabado start a gardening channel. You know, just let me know some of your thoughts and um, and, and let me know if, uh, you know, kind of what's going on with you. What are some of the things that you'd like to like to have discussed? Because I just I just share with you my life as I know it in hopes that it helps inspire any of us or any of you. Uh, to live your best life. I know I'm incredibly humbled and inspired by the fact that people watch these videos. And I think that it's, um, you know, if, if it helps one person, then I've, I've done what I need to do. And, uh, but again, if you, if you do like it and you have other like-minded people that you think might resonate, this information might resonate with, share it with them, uh, share the video. Uh, they can embed the video. You could take, uh, you'll find a bunch of shorts on, uh, YouTube to little tidbits of information that I take from these videos and I try to post a couple of times a week and really just give it to you straight. Um, so on that note, uh, have a good uh, rest of your day and, uh, and I'll talk to you soon.